journey, you are welcome here at David's United Church of Christ. We are so glad that you have joined us for our virtual worship service this morning, whether this is your first time with us or you have been a member here for a long time. We are grateful that you are with us for the worship of God this morning. We have a few announcements as we begin our time together today. We have our United Church of Christ Lenten devotional still available in the church office uh, Mondays through Thursdays, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. They are available uh, here in the church building. So I invite you to come and uh, pick up one of those. Our Dare to Dream uh, Lenten Bible study continues on Monday evenings at 7 p.m. each week throughout Lent. So we invite you to join us for a rich conversation around Dare to Dream uh, by Reverend Mike Slaughter. We have a number of opportunities for children and youth each week, uh, Sundays for children to participate in Holy Moly and youth group. Invite you to see your schedule via email or to contact Brenda Francis, our minister for children and youth. Easter flowers are available for order for you to honor uh, a special person in your life or to remember someone who has passed away. Flowers are available for seven dollars a piece and we have uh, lilies, begonias, daffodils, and tulips available for sponsorship this Easter season. So contact the church office either by email or phone to put in your order for Easter flowers. And finally, we are conducting a March Madness fundraiser. Volunteers are making a variety of sweet and savory snacks for you to purchase online on our website that will be available for pickup this coming week. See your church email for the link uh, to pre-order those. You may also uh, order delivery as well. So uh, please come out and uh, support uh, the children of David's UCC, which will be the recipients of this fundraiser. And this month, our special offering is going to one great hour of sharing one of the special mission offerings of the United Church of Christ, which supports our human relief work in this country and throughout the world for those who are affected by disasters, for those who are receiving help with uh, development and aid relief efforts. So we invite you to give generously to one great hour of sharing through David's UCC. As well, we thank you for your generous support of David's United Church of Christ. You are able to give by sending a check to the church or bringing it to the church office by giving online or through our Tithely app or setting up direct bank bill pay through your financial institution. No matter how you choose to give, 
to David's UCC. We greatly appreciate your generosity and your faithful stewardship as we continue to share God's love and light with our community. The love language of physical touch includes signs of physical affection, such as hugs, kisses, holding hands, cuddling, and intimacy. These gestures can be incredibly affirming and serve as powerful emotional connectors for people with this love language. The roots can go back to childhood, where some people felt deep affection and love from their caretakers when they were held. People who communicate their appreciation through this language when they consent to it, feel appreciated when they are hugged or touched. They value the feeling of warmth and comfort that comes with loving gestures and physical interaction. Let us pray. O oh God, who is ever near, touch our hearts, minds, and souls, and yes, our bodies. O oh God, who gave us bodies both vulnerable and strong, may we use touch to heal rather than abuse. May we reach out in embrace and compassion, healing those places where touch has hurt. O oh God, who comes to us in a body like ours, let us use touch for building up rather than breaking down. Touch us, O God, with the warmth of your Holy Spirit and the power of your Christ. Amen. God, we sent your peace and power in this place we love so much. We are moved by gentle fragrance. We are blessed by healing touch. In these pews we hear the gospel. We see life beyond compare. Here we gather at your table, tasting to visit my grandpa by Zoom today. He's never done Zoom before. I've been getting my classes on Zoom, so I know how to do it. I'm not allowed to go to the place where grandpa lives now because of this virus that's so bad. They're afraid I might give it to grandpa, and I wouldn't want to do that. I miss my grandpa. He always gives me a big hug. We won't be able to do that on Zoom. I miss his hug. Hi, Billy. Hi. They set this thing up for me so I could talk to you. They said, look at this screen on this machine and your grandson is going to be there. How did you get there? Are you on TV? No, I'm not on TV, Grandpa. This is a computer. We're on Zoom. Zoom? Well, it's the only place I'll be Zooming. I'm not moving very fast these days. I miss you, Grandpa. I miss you too, Billy. 
I just want to give you a big hug. But they won't let me out of this building and they won't let anyone else in. It's just not fair. I want to give you a hug too, but I can't because of this virus thing. Hugs are important. I just wish I could reach out and touch you. Touch is one of the love languages. There are five love languages. I learned them at Holy Moly. They are words of affirmation, acts of service, receiving gifts, quality time, and touch. Wow. How'd you get so smart, Billy? I think I get that from you, Grandpa. <laughs> Probably so. That's a word of affirmation. And you visiting me on Zoom, that's an act of service and a gift. And we certainly are spending quality time. If we could just touch, we would be using all the love languages. That's true. Now I'm sure I get my smart from you. <laughs> well, probably so, but I guess also from your parents and your teachers. Yeah, they teach me facts like what the five love languages are, but you teach me to think and feel. That's even more important. Well, probably so. Well, let's say a prayer together, Billy. Okay. Dear God, thank you for my grandson and for the time that we get to spend together on Zoom. While back in my day, there wasn't such a thing. It's like he's on TV. Well, thank you also for the five love languages. Let's see, uh, affirmation, service, gifts, time, and touch. I pray that we can give each other hugs really soon. Amen. Amen. Billy, thanks for visiting with me. It's good to see you. It's good to see you. Bye, Grandpa. Bye, Billy. I am my beloved's, and his desire is for me. Come, my beloved, let us go forth into the fields and lodge in the villages. Let us go out early to the vineyards and see whether the vines have budded, whether the grape blossoms have opened and the pomegranates are in bloom. There I will give you my love. The mandrakes give forth fragrance, and over our doors are all choice fruits, new as well as old, which I have laid up for you, O oh my beloved. From Mark, chapter 5, verses 25 through 34. Now there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years. She'd endured much under many physicians and had spent all that she had, and she was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak, for she said, if I but touch his clothes, I will be made well. Immediately her hemorrhage stopped and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. Immediately aware that the power had gone forth from him, Jesus turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing in on you? How can you say, Who touched me? He looked all around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling, fell down before him and told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. Would you pray with me, please? 
May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Good touch and bad touch. If you were Gen X or younger, you probably grew up being taught about the difference between good touch and bad touch. We learn from a very young age that touch is very powerful. It can demonstrate the most intimate, life-giving love, and it can also literally destroy life. Research has shown us for a long time that babies who are held and embraced as newborns are more likely to be well-adjusted and be able to form emotional bonds with others. Children who are not held and physically shown love can just as easily form pathologies because they have been starved of human touch and connection. We know how formative it is for babies to have skin-on-skin contact with their parents. As adults, we have that very same need to be touched. Touch is a sign of connection, of closeness, of acceptance. I remember once hearing a pastor saying, hug someone this morning, it might be the only touch they get this week. That for many of us, especially those of us who live alone, has been one of the hardest parts of this pandemic. One pastor friend of mine has not touched another person since last July. To be starved of that connection of skin contact has been profoundly difficult for some. Even as we plan on returning to in-person worship on Easter and beyond, we will have to continue being socially distanced. Even though some of our first impulses are to hug each other or shake hands after not seeing one another for so long, because of the pandemic, we will wait. There's no way around it. It's hard to be deprived of that for so long. In this year of distancing, we have learned how important touch is in its absence. But all touch is not equal. It's important to consider consent when we consider the power of touch. Some people are touchy-feely and want to hug everyone. But others are more reserved and save physical touch for those with whom they are the closest. We have to honor and respect how each of us receives and appreciates touch. We often do not know how it has been used or abused against a particular person. In this Me Too era, we have to acknowledge the ways in which people's bodies have been violated by forced and unwanted touch. It has the power to destroy. And especially those with social and cultural power need to recognize the ways that touch has been weaponized. The church is in no way immune from this. Clergy sex abuse scandals that have come to light in the past decades are a stain upon the name Christian. The church has much work to do to bring healing and reconciliation to such situations. So in the church, we must be cognizant about the consent of touch. Physical touch is our fifth and final love language. It is perhaps the most easily understood because it is precisely so tangible and tactile. To friends and family whose love language is physical touch, Things like a hug, embrace, handshake, or even a high five can demonstrate our love and affection for each other. For romantic partners, it includes those things, but also sexual intimacy. Sex is an important and integral way in which significant others communicate their love with one another. It is a uniquely powerful form of connection that bonds couples intimately. Gary Chapman wrote in The Five Love Languages, physical touch is also a powerful vehicle for communicating marital love. Holding hands, kissing, embracing, and sexual intercourse are all ways of communicating emotional love to one's spouse. 
For some individuals, physical touch is their primary love language. Without it, they feel un unloved. With it, their emotional tank is filled and they feel secure in the love of their spouse. Even if talking about physical relationships and SEX in church makes us nervous, it's right there in the Bible. First of all, God created us and our bodies and designed how we are to use them. God designed us to derive pleasure from, from each other in intimacy. Indeed, a whole book in the Bible celebrates physical intimacy between two lovers. The Song of Songs, or the Song of Solomon, is essentially a back and forth between two lovers describing each other's beauty and desire to be together physically. While there have been attempts over the years to say that it was an allegory of God and Israel or Christ and the church, it's about what you think it's about. It begins in the voice of the woman. Let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth, for your love is better than wine. Your anointing oils are fragrant, your perfume is poured out. Therefore the maidens love you. Draw me after you, let us make haste. The king has brought me into his chambers. Later, she says, upon my bed at night, I sought him whom my soul loves. I sought him, but found him not. I called him, but he gave no answer. Her lover later describes her saying, your lips are like a crimson thread and your mouth is lovely. Your cheeks are like halves of a pomegranate behind your veil. Your neck is like the tower of David built in courses. On it hang a thousand bucklers, all of them shields of warriors. Your two breasts are like two fawns, twins of a gazelle that feed among the lilies. By the way, don't try to draw her from that description. But here in the middle of scripture, we have an ode to physical beauty and expressing love sexually. Indeed, God has ordained that we communicate love in this way in our most intimate relationship. It is God who has given us our sense of touch to enjoy, to demonstrate love, and not to destroy. But let us draw back again to see the gift of touch more generally. Leo Biscalia said, too often we underestimate the power of a touch, a smile, a kind word, a listening ear, an honest compliment, or the smallest act of caring all of which have the potential to turn a life around. A loving touch is life-giving, and it can be as simple as a hand on a shoulder. Throughout the Gospels, we see Jesus giving the gift of touch. Gary Chapman writes that the biblical account of the life of Jesus shows that he frequently used physical touch as a love language. As he taught in the villages, parents would bring him little children to have him touch them. His disciples first rebuked the people, thinking that Jesus was too busy for the children. But he took the children in his arms and blessed them. Most of Jesus' healings involved touching the sick or the infirm person. Most of those people were considered ritually unclean. He wasn't supposed to touch them, and yet he did. He touched the ten lepers and made them well. He touched the eyes of blind men and made them see. He touched the lame and they could walk. But in today's gospel reading, Jesus does not touch the person being healed. Rather, this unnamed woman touches him. The unnamed woman has been bleeding for 12 years. 12 years! She has tried everything she could, from witch doctors to miracle cures, and her problems have only worsened. For 12 years, the bleeding has continued, and for those 12 years, no one has touched her. Not a soul. 
Can any of us imagine what that would feel like, not being touched for 12 years? I think some of us can recall some time in our lives when even an embrace by a friend or even a stranger was what could get us through the day. And she is completely and utterly desperate to be healed. She has no other options. It seems that she has no hope. But she has heard about this Jesus who some say is a prophet, who some say is an imposter, but the most bold say is the Messiah come to bring about the reign of God. Mark doesn't actually tell us what she believes on this count. But what we do know is that she is sure of he, Jesus' healing power through God. She knows somehow that this rabbi, this Jesus of Nazareth, is her remaining hope. The bleeding woman knows that if she can even touch Jesus' clothes, not even his body, but his clothes, she will be healed. Immediately as she touches the Nazarene's robe, she is healed. The power of God goes out from him to her, immediately stopping the bleeding. A simple touch saved her life. Jesus audaciously asks, who touched him? Among a swarm of dozens of people crowding around him and bumping into him, the woman fearfully goes before him and confesses it was her. Jesus tells her, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. It is God's promise of everlasting hope become physical in her very body through touching the hem of Jesus' robe. God's love and healing pours forth because this woman reached out and touched Jesus. Physical touch is not only an expression of our love for one another, but of the love of God. Our touch is powerful. It can hurt or it can heal. The withdrawal of touch can say as much as its actual use. So may we be sensitive to how others want to receive touch. May we use our touch to heal, to build up, to encourage, to show our love and God's love. In the words of the great novelist Charles Dickens, have a heart that never hardens, a temper that never tires, and a touch that never hurts. To God be the glory. Amen. Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. O God, you sent your Son that the world might be saved through him. Inspire the witness of the church throughout the world. Empower missionaries, Bible translators, and ministries of service in your name. Bless our partners in ministry our global partner churches, and all who serve across the world. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. From east to west, your steadfast love is shown. Nourish seas and deserts, wilderness areas and cities. Give water to thirsty lands. Nurture spring growth that feeds hungry creatures. Bless farmers as they prepare for the growing season. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You sustained your people in the wilderness. Give courage to all who lead in times of crisis and scarce resources. Prosper the work of those who aid victims of famine and drought. Bring peace in places where scarce resources cause violence. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Your mercy endures forever. Deliver all who cry to you, especially those who are hungry or without homes. Give life in places where death seems triumphant. Give healing to those who are sick and comfort to those who mourn. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. By grace we have been saved. Fill this congregation to overflowing with that grace that we show mercy to others. Nourish any in our midst who are hungry, especially children, and bless our ministries of feeding and shelter. 
Give us patience and courage when the way seems long. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Your Son was lifted up that whoever believes might have eternal life. We praise you for all who have died in Christ. Bring us with all the saints into the fullness of your promises. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you. O faithful God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who has taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. now this benediction. May the Lord Jesus Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness and protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into these doors. In the name of God, our creator, and Christ, our redeemer, and the Holy Spirit, our advocate. Amen.